A very good morning to you and welcome to the Morning Outlook Report. I'm Rachel Jones reporting live from Kalkine TV Sydney Studios. Now the Australian share market is set to open lower this morning as the S&P 500 retreated. The Dow Jones index fell by 269 points or 0.8%. The S&P 500 index lost 0.3%. Bitcoin prices plunged after Central American country El Salvador adopted the cryptocurrency as legal tender. Meanwhile, technology stocks drove the Nasdaq to new record highs. U.S. longer-term Treasury prices fell yesterday. The U.S. Treasury sold 58 billion U.S. dollars of three and notes at a yield of 0.447 percent. U.S. 10-year yields rose by five points to near 1.37 percent. Back home, it was another choppy performance for the Australian share market, with the ASX 200 recovering in late trade to finish largely unchanged. The ASX 200 edged higher by 1.8 points, or 0.02 percent, to 7,530.3. While the market has struggled to find direction so far this month, it follows both Fortescue and BHP trading ex-dividend for their largest dividends on record. Fortescue Metals shares slumped by 11% on Monday and BHP dropped 7% last Thursday. Now, considering BHP is the third largest and Fortescue the eighth biggest stock on the ASX, these declines have held the market back in recent sessions. Around 6 billion shares were traded yesterday, worth $7.9 billion. 686 stocks rose, 730 fell, and 405 finished unchanged. In other news, the Reserve Bank kept the cash rate steady at a record low of 0.1% for a ninth consecutive meeting, as widely expected. It reiterated that rates are likely to remain at lows until at least 2024. The RBA said it would follow through with its plan to glad gradually reduce bond buying from $5 billion to $4 billion each week starting this month. Economists were split over whether or not the central bank would delay these plans due to the extended lockdowns. On Wednesday, no less than 15 companies are set to trade ex-dividend. And in other news, international vaccine passports are set to be in place within weeks for international travel for Australians to prove their immunisation status overseas. Prime Minister Scott Morrison is also looking at home quarantine for returning travellers. And Victoria claims it has ICU capacity of 4,000 beds as the state braces for a surge in demand for acute care as local COVID-19 infections continue to rise sharply. Now it's time for a very short break. Stay with us. Tune in to get the latest information. Whether it's about market movements or the currency graph. Sectoral coverage or industry news. We cover it all in our news segments. Be on top of the latest news with Calkine TV. And welcome back. Let's look at some news from this morning. The Macquarie Group is expecting its performance in the first half of the new financial year to be slightly weaker than the second half of 2021. First half of 2022 included the Macquarie Infrastructure Corporation disposition fee in Macquarie Asset Management. Favourable market conditions are contributing to a stronger first half 2022 result, more than anticipated, together with the scale of the UK commercial and industrial smart meter portfolio. Junior mineral exploration company Midas Mineral made its ASX debut at 11 o'clock yesterday, with its shares finishing 5% lower, despite being up over 25% on the open. Shares in Healthco Healthcare and Wellness fell by 1.7% yesterday. The fund manager invests in medical assets like private and maternity hospitals. The shares rose by 16% on the ASX debut on Monday. Across the world, European share markets eased on Tuesday with investors cautious ahead of a meeting with the European Central Bank later in the week. Utilities, healthcare and chemicals fell by around 1%. Deutsche Telekom said on Tuesday it has sold its Dutch unit T-Mobile Netherlands to a consortium of private equity houses for 5.1 billion euros. 
The pan-European stock 600 index fell by 0.5 percent and the German DAX index fell by 0.6 percent with the UK FTSE index losing 0.5 percent. In London, trade shares in Rio Tinto were up 0.4 percent, while shares in BHP fell by 0.3 percent. Major currencies were weaker against the U.S. dollar in European and U.S. trade. The euro fell from highs near 1.1880 U.S. dollars to session lows near 1.18.35. It was near 1.1840 at the U.S. close. The Aussie dollar fell from highs near $74.35 to lows near $73.75 and was near 73.85 U.S. cents at the U.S. close. The Japanese yen eased from near 109.85 yen per U.S. dollar to 110.3 and was near lows at the U.S. close. Moving on, global oil prices fell up to 1.4% on Tuesday. A stronger U.S. dollar weakened purchasing power of European and Asian buyers of commodities like gold, oil and metals. Also, data showed that Chinese oil imports fell 8% in August, but supply disruptions in the U.S. Gulf Coast capped losses. The Brent crude price fell by 53 U.S. cents, or 0.7%, to $71.69 a barrel. The U.S. and MX crude price fell by 94 cents, or 1.4%, to $68.35 U.S. cents a barrel. Base metal prices fell by 0.7, minus 2.5% on Tuesday, with aluminium down the least and tin down the most. But zinc bucked the trend up 1.2%. The gold futures price fell by $35.20 an ounce, or 1.9%, to $1,798.50 an ounce. Iron ore rose by $6.35 a tonne, or 4.8% to $137.85 a ton. Now that's all for our Morning Outlook report here on Calkind D. Have a great day trading. Stay tuned for more market updates and economic news live throughout the day. This is Rachel signing off for now.